The average salary in the NFL is over a million dollars. One million dollars average salary. This gives people an opportunity to take care of their family and a community in a way that they've never imagined. And I think words are really important and how we label things is really important. And to call the NFL a plantation, which evokes the worst original sin of our past as, as, as a nation. You know, that slave mentality. And, and, and it's like, this is my team, you do what the I tell y'all to do, or we get rid of y'all. Or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. We will definitely not uh, shut up and dribble. What do you describe a system where almost 100%, except for one person of owners, are white, and 70% of the players who earn those people their money are black? It's called a plantation, and that's what it is. Can I get 30 seconds? Uh, no. Next on the auction block, we got Odell Beckham Jr. And that little monkey gets loose, doesn't he? He certainly, he certainly does. For a number of former NFL players, the hard hits extend beyond the field. The league has settled claims related to concussions and brain injuries, but there are questions now as to whether race was used unfairly to determine who got the money. The NFL is pledging to make sure race no longer plays a part in the landmark 2013 NFL concussion settlement program which has so far paid eligible former players suffering from the effects of head injuries hundreds of millions of dollars. Football doesn't give you an expiration date. You just expire. But players like former Steelers defensive end Keevan Henry say they didn't qualify because of the color of their skin. Despite battling memory loss, headaches, and depression, symptoms Henry suspects are long-term effects of head injuries he sustained on the field his claims were denied. I just want to be looked at the same way as a white guy. At the center of the firestorm, a controversial practice known as race norming. In medicine, it's supposed to help doctors make better diagnoses by using race to make assumptions about a patient's background. Critics say using it to determine level of brain injury is discriminatory because it assumes black players start at a lower cognitive level than white ones. Unfortunately, the NFL's decision to use race as a determining factor for the concussion settlement does not come as a surprise. In fact, it validates the notion that the NFL is an American plantation. To completely understand the legacy of racism in the NFL, one would have to understand the history of the league as it relates to America's history. In a limited capacity, from 1902 to 1932, black players were present in professional football. This would change in 1932, thanks to a gentleman's agreement inspired by George Preston Marshall, owner of the Washington Redskins. Though it was never admitted, black players were banned from the league for 10 years. Many of the owners who oppose integration embrace the theory that black players simply weren't good enough or smart enough to play the game. However, Marshall made it clear that he simply didn't want black players on his team. In 1942, Marshall argued that white players, especially those from the South, would go to great extremes to physically harm black players. So allegedly, according to Marshall, black players were excluded from professional football for their own best interests. The reintegration of the NFL began in the 1940s with the Los Angeles Rams, but it would take over 20 years to complete the task. In 1962, Marshall's Redskins would become the last team to field a black player. In the aftermath of the reintegration of the NFL, black athletes have continued to dominate the sport, which completely destroys the superior gene theory, which was used to keep them out of the league for decades. So now that the NFL is virtually controlled by black athletes, why is the NFL still called a plantation? Black is the better athlete, and he's bred to be the better athlete because this goes back all the way to the Civil War, when during the slave trading, the big, the owner, the slave owner would 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 breed his big black to his big woman, so that he could have big black kids. So Jimmy the Greek was fired for making what many will argue are true statements. 
When segregation was no longer tolerated in the NFL, the owners were forced to admit what had always been apparent. Contrary to the myth concerning the black athlete's ability on the field, the fact of the matter is simple. The owners knew, without a doubt, that black athletes were far more superior, and they were also an asset to the organization. And the owners immediately found a way to use this to their advantage in a manner that many will argue is very similar to the institution of slavery. So in the spirit of their ancestors who were motivated by capitalism, the black athlete is now hunted and captured according to the needs of the organization. So in reality, the only difference between the slave and the athlete is the fact that the labor is no longer free. Jimmy the Greek's commentary was prophetic to say the least. The NFL is now dominated by black players. In 2020, 70% of the NFL players were black and all of the owners are white except for two. However, there were only three black head coaches and only three black managers. Considering the number of black NFL players, why is there such a huge disparity in key administrative positions? Well, Jimmy the Greek nailed it again. If, if they take over coaching like everybody wants them to, there's not going to be anything left for the white people. I mean, all the players are black. I mean, the only thing that the whites control is the coaching jobs. Now, I'm not being derogatory about it, but that's all that's left for them. Maybe we need to get more black coaches. Oh, it's all right with me. Okay, well, I'm sure that they'll take over that pretty soon. Without a doubt, black athletes own the football field. And yes, this is because they are superior athletes. But the reason there are so few black NFL coaches and administrators is the same reason why black quarterbacks have struggled in the league. The NFL's exclusion of black coaches, general managers, and quarterbacks is directly related to the notion that black people are less intelligent. And as a result, they are relegated to positions that require less thinking. 